perhaps a tricky, I, 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 maybe I should talk to some of the science people and see how they're tackling labs. Um, you know, doing the class content this way is straightforward. Um, but trying to do these labs is a little tricky. So I wanted to ask them now, it says I'm reconnecting again, so I don't know if I'm frozen. Um, I wanted to ask you your ideas a little bit, um, and also what your circumstances and things are, because I think that that will make a difference um, as to how we approach trying to give you some experience with these lab activities. So that's open. Let me share my screen. Allow. Okay. Can everybody see the syllabus? ideas for class. I want you to make sure that you read through this uh, more thoroughly before you complete your participation agreement. Okay? Um, I'm going to talk about things that directly impact how a lab is going to run, but you need to make sure that you understand everything that's in here um, before you do that agreement, please. So let me scroll down. The required text. It's a bit dark in here, but hopefully you can see this. Is this one? It's quite old now, um, but what I like about this one is that 90 plus percent of you are going to go into an applied situation when you leave school. Only a very small minority of students that take this class are going to grad school per se and most of you aren't going to grad school for exercise physiology. So my goal with the lab is to try to give you a hands-on experience at assessment um, concepts that um, supports the theoretical ideas that we're doing in the class. So if I take that exercise physiology principle from the class, how do I test that with my students, my athletes, my clients, etc. Okay, so hopefully that makes some sense. Um, and, and this book is um, good because, as, as the title says, it's trying to do physical fitness labs, i.e. assessments, on a budget. So it's not looking at needing hugely expensive pieces of equipment. Um, if you know uh, Dr. Barlow in biology, uh, he has like this amazing lab set up because he does ex-phys assessment and testing and research but he does a much more lab-based approach to his research. He doesn't go out in the field and test athletes who are training, right? Um, as we go down through the syllabus here, uh, again, if you are on the K through 12 teacher education um, degree plan, these competencies are the ones that lab uh, addresses that you would need for your exams, for your teacher licensure. If you're not on that K through 12, if you're health and wellness or uh, sport and rec management, you don't need to pay any attention to this initial A through G list, right? And it shouldn't be A through G, what happened to D and E? Oh, I know, we don't need D and E for lab. On the class one. That's fine. Okay, 
So um, lab is, as I said, typically a hands-on experience. The point of having a lab session attached to a class is to give you the opportunity to experience things for yourself that we're talking about kind of abstractly in the class situation, okay? So how we're going to do that this semester, I'm not entirely certain yet, which is why I wanted doing this a little bit differently to how I've run the other intro sessions, because I wanted to talk specifically to you and get some thoughts from you, okay? Um, so we've got to be able to participate, that's the whole point. And so one of my questions is, uh, how comfortable are you at going out, so given the pandemic, given that if we're outside we have to wear a mask, um, if you're exercising there's some uh, gray area as to whether you're meant to wear a mask if you're exercising outside. Um, personally, what I am doing is if I go to the walking trail and my car is the only car in the parking lot, I don't put my mask on. Um, it's out on the outskirts of town and I'm not going to see anybody. Um, if I was exercising in the local park and there were lots of people in the park, I, I probably would wear my mask, depending on what I was going to be doing and how close I had to get to those people. So given that situation, I'd like to know how comfortable you are with the idea of going outside and doing some of these labs. So let me come back and bring you guys back up here. I'm going to share my camera again. So talk to me. Tell me what you think about that. Because that will impact how we lay out what we're going to do this semester. struggling with how to, to label the evaluation um, since you're not here in the classroom with me. Um, what, I, what I might do is get you to film yourself for two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, whatever, doing the lab and then you can post that video and that will be your participation element. Um, and we'll work out how to put the workbook in electronically onto Blackboard, I think, will be the easiest 
way of doing it. Um, and before I forget, if, if we're going to do that, there's a piece of, is it an app, Ryan? That, that um, PDF, the camera scan thing? Okay, there's an app that you can download for free. You probably already have it, but I'm so backward. Um, I only just learned about it. So, um, find it. Okay, there's an app you can download called Cam Scanner. You just want the really basic version of that. And that allows you to take a photograph of the pages in your workbook and then turn them into a PDF that you can load onto uh, the assignment in Blackboard. Okay, so that's how I think um, we should go about that. I think that would be the easiest way to tackle that, to be honest, um, from the workbook standpoint. Um, then the other thing I have to work around is that some of these labs involve partners. Um, and equipment which you don't have at home. And so what I had planned was that my partner would be my lab rat and I would do the lab on him and film it so that you could see how to do it. That was the plan. However, he now has class at 11 o'clock on a Thursday. So that's not going to happen. So what I think is that for some of these labs, um, there's going to be a very short introduction by me making the link between the lab and the classwork for you. And then we can have a discussion about how well we understand that, that link. Okay? Yell at me if I'm not making sense, guys, because this is all new for all of us, and I really am a little out of my depth on how to do an applied hands-on lab online. So please do jump in if you've got ideas or if what I'm saying doesn't make any sense, okay? Um, so for example, next week's lab is anthropometry and body composition which you won't have the equipment for. You might, some of you may have a bioimpedance scale. That would be great, but most of you won't, okay? So, um, next week, I think probably I will do an introduction. We'll have a little discussion about how we can relate the class information to the measurement of body composition. And I am going to do my best, she says, to find video. Um, Brian tells me that if I look hard enough, there's video of anything on the internet now. So um, I'm going to do my best to find some video that shows you how to take anthropometric measures and body composition measures. Okay. Um, the following week, I have an actual lecture for you because that's the, if you remember yesterday, I said when we went through the physical activity log that you need a valid um, physiological measure of intensity for your aerobic activity. So that lecture on the third that's labeled intensity relates back to um, to class, but also directly to your lab measurement, uh, your log measurements, okay? Um, so, some of these are going to be things where I can do something in the classroom and show you, and some of them are not, okay? Some of them, for example, lab nine is a, I think it's lab nine, is a sprint test, sprint assessment. So you can find some space outside and run that assessment. It will be a lot easier to run it if you have a friend. You 
don't have to be close to each other, but if you have someone who can time you, that would be easier. But we can give it a go on our own. My goal is not to have perfect measurements for you in this lab. The goal is to show you how to measure some of the things that we're talking about in class. All right? And I'm about to discuss why that's so important. All right? I'll come back to the camera in a little bit. Okay? Um, uh, what else? I think, I mean, I'm just going to play it week by week. If any of you have any better ideas, please, or if you have any ideas, please do, you know, please chime in. Um, we, we all have to help each other out under these circumstances. This is not, this is not easy for you, I know, and it certainly isn't easy for me. Um, I, I just admire all of you for registering this semester because I suspect had I been a student, I would have gone off traveling around the country for the semester um, and come back in the spring. So I really, really admire that you're here and that you are willing to knuckle down and tackle this challenge. Um, and you know, we will be as flexible and as helpful to each other as we can. So, um, with that, I want to talk about um, a little bit about assessment and then a little bit about goal setting that goes back to your physical activity log and then I'm going to let you get on with labs one or two on your own, okay, because they are just fill-in items. So, let me come back to turn it around because I need to move. I cannot teach standing or sitting still. It's impossible. Not wrong, but that is. 
isn't science. Right? And you are taking a degree in science. Right? PE, movement, exercise science, coaching, teaching, athletic training. This is science. And if we're going to do it properly, we need to apply the rules. Right? So the rule is I pretext. I run the intervention. The intervention could be the training program. The intervention could be the rehab program. The intervention for those of you that, that um, have done the playground with me could be a motor skill intervention with people. right? And then we post-test and we do a true comparison to see what the improvement is or it's not. Okay? So that's the first reason. The second reason is what if when I do the post-test that person didn't improve or only improved a tiny little amount? Does that mean that person didn't try very hard? Or work very hard? Or does it mean I didn't do my job properly and the program I set didn't work for whatever reason? And the more we do exercise physiology, the more you'll realize that there are a multitude of reasons that that program might not work. Right? If I don't set it absolutely right. Okay? Does that make sense? So, I do assessment so I can tell whether the person truly improved. And I do assessment so that I know whether what I'm doing works. Because if it doesn't work, I have to change it. If I don't change it, I'm a lazy coach, a lazy trainer, and the people I'm working with aren't going to get the outcomes they're expecting. Right? So the reason we're doing what we're doing this semester, the reason that you have that particular lab book that is full of all these assessments, is to give you a toolbox to be a scientist. Right? I don't have to work in a lab in a white coat to be a scientist. Right? PE teacher is a scientist. Okay? But only if they use scientific principles and apply them to their work. Does that make sense? So, next piece of the pie, goal setting. All right. Goals can be really useful if they are set appropriately. If they're set poorly, they can at best not be any use at all, and at worst be completely demotivating. So it's important that we understand the idea of setting goals appropriately. Right? Um, to me, one of the most important ideas is that goals are personal. Okay? Now, I have to add a caveat that I'm not a team sport player. Um, I'm an individual sport, I'm an individual academic study person, I, I don't do group stuff, <laughs> um, I, I just, I, I don't. Um, so, I, possibly my opinion is, is a little biased, I, I would not have a problem with being accused of that. Um, but, one of the things I think that is a, is a big problem is when other people set the goal for you, right? So, 
the easy one to fall back on is coach says our goal is to win state championships this mess this year right well no <laughs> his goal is to win state championships this year right my goal may be to get through the season without getting hurt because last year I had to have surgery same goal. Okay, my goal may be I just want to go out there and do the absolute best I can for this team and that's all I can do. Right? So the number one rule is that goals have to be personal. Someone else cannot set a goal for you. It's an internal thing. Then we can use our SMART acronym, okay? S stands for specific. So that's easy to understand, right? I get on the scale and I go, okay, my goal is to lose weight. That is not specific. To make it specific, I have to say, I want to lose X amount of X, right? So, for most people, when they say, I want to lose weight, what they really mean is, I want to lose fat mass, right? And we'll talk about this a little bit uh, on Friday, tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? Yes. Um, Right? They don't mean I want to lose weight, because weight encompasses bone mass, muscle mass, right? all these things that are really good and healthy for us. I don't want to lose bone mass. I don't want to get to 80 and fall over and break my hip because I've got osteopenia. I don't want to lose muscle mass so that when I go shopping I can't pick my own bag of potatoes up and put it in the back of my car. I want to be strong. right? So, I want to lose weight doesn't mean what I mean, right? The goal is not specific. The goal is I want to lose 2% body fat, for example, right? Specific, okay? Smart, M. M is measurable, has to be measurable. So I've got to be able to measure it relatively precisely. Okay. It's M A. Achievable or attainable, depending on which resource you look at. Okay. So if I said my goal is to run a um, run a marathon in three hours. That ain't ever happening in my lifetime. Okay? That is not achievable. That is a bad goal. Okay? I want to run a marathon in three and a half or three and three quarter hours. Yeah, that might be achievable, possibly. I'm pretty slow and I'm not very fit. Right? That's probably more likely to be four hours at least. Okay? So it's got to be achievable, attainable. R, relevant. So how is it relevant to me, this goal? Right? What makes it relevant to me? And T is timely. So I have to put some boundaries on achieving the goal, which is why we talk about short-term goals, long-term goals. Right? My long-term goal might be to lose 10 pounds of body fat this year, but my short-term goal is to lose one pound this week. Right? Does that make sense? Questions on goal setting. Got the 
speakers on in case some of these ask any question and I can't hear them. Any questions? So other than Gabe, the rest of you need to think about what are the goals around my aerobic activity for my physical activity log for the class, right? You don't need more than one. I would not put in more than three. Um, but think of a goal. So for some of you, if you're an anaerobic athlete and you never do anything that you think of as aerobic, right? Your goal might be, God, I don't think I actually do 150 minutes a week of aerobic activity. If I think about my week, I mean, I go to the gym and I lift, and I, and I run hill sprints on the treadmill or, or outside Greyhound Arena. My, what do I do that's aerobic? Remember to click on that link for the Department of Health and Human Services and have a look at some of the suggestions of things that you could count as aerobic that you might not be thinking about because you're fixated on this exercise. Kind of concept, right? Question. Okay. So today you want to complete lab one, but you don't need to do the whole. Let me have a look at it because there are some of these you can't. Oh, and one of the things, I forgot to say this earlier, each lab in the workbook has an introductory section called background, right? And that's the piece that I'm going to have a quick chat with you about at the beginning that tries to link it back to the concepts we're doing in class. But it would be really helpful if you read that background ahead of lab time so that you've got an idea of what the lab is supposed to be achieving. All right? And then we'll be able to have maybe a better discussion about that. So read the background. Read the procedures carefully, especially given that some of these labs you're not actually going to get the opportunity to do like next week and you're going to watch a video of someone else doing it. So make sure that you read the procedures. They're very, um, they're very good at laying out the steps to complete the activity in the right way. All right. Why is that important? Why do you have to follow the rules, the procedures for the assessment tool? Anybody? Got an idea? So you don't make a mistake? So you don't make a mistake? Good. Right? So, that's important because the mistake could end up hurting someone. Right? If you, if you do it wrong, the outcome might be injuring the person you're assessing, which would be really bad. Okay? The other reason it's important is some of these labs have normative tables, right? So we all like to compare ourselves to everybody else, okay? So I, I do my assessment and I get my number and I go to the table and it says females 50 plus should score this to be bad, this to be good, this to be excellent. Where do I lie? Right? Okay? Ha! I'm excellent, okay? But if I didn't follow the procedures properly and I didn't complete the assessment the way it's supposed to be done, my number doesn't mean anything. I can't compare my number to what's on that table. Right? So it depends how important being able to compare yourself to the norm is. Right? If I want to be able to compare my data I have to follow the procedures exactly, right? 
So, lab one. is covering the idea of health screening, right? Your next door neighbor says, oh, hey, gay, I need to lose a few pounds. Can you tell me what to do? And you go, oh, yeah, mate, you need to go, go do X, Y, Z, right? Don't do that, okay? Don't give anybody an exercise program until you have signed off a doctor's approval that they're healthy enough to take exercise or some other kind of screening and then use your own screening tools and even then with those two things if that person gets hurt or dies you can still get sued right if you haven't taken your law and ethics class yet that will come up in your law and ethics class so, um, don't do the first one because the first one on page four is informed consent for a bench press 1RM test. I don't think, um, read it so you understand what it is about, but you don't need to do it. I don't know how many of you have access you know, some of you might have some weights and things at home. A lot of you are living in areas where the gyms are closed or there's only minimal um, use allowed. So we're not going to worry about trying to get access to a one hour in bench press. Okay? The second one is the parkue. Had you been here in class, you would have had to have completed the parkue for class anyway. Okay? Um, so do the parkue. Then do the third one is the pre-exercise testing health status questionnaire. So complete that one. And then at the end of each lab, there's a header bar that says extension activities. Okay. You are not required to complete the extension activity to get the grade for the lab, all right? However, if you have the time and the interest, I would encourage you to complete the extension activities when we can, just because the more you play with the data and the idea of the lab and what it's trying to achieve, the better you will understand it and the better you'll know how to use it. All right. So the extension activities are useful from a knowledge base point of view, but you don't have to complete the extension activity, take a photo of it, turn it into a PDF and download it into Blackboard. All right. So do number one, do number two. We will talk more about taking heart rates and things in a couple of weeks, but follow their um, procedures for now, all right? And then I have a little bit more to add to that when we get to doing a step test. Okay, questions? So you've got a good half hour, 40 minutes now before the official end of lab. If I were you, I would sit right down and do lab one and two right now so it's done. Because if you go, oh good, early lunch, yay, you might not get back to it, right? And you don't want to be not submitting an assignment. For now, don't, I don't have the assignment set up in Blackboard yet. I don't know when that is going to happen. It's not the priority on the whole pile of things that have to happen to get this online stuff running a little bit more smoothly for next week. All right. So if you go into the Blackboard site and there isn't 
an assignment set up yet for labs one and two, just keep checking. But do them now so that when the assignment turns up, you can just download them and get them out of the way. Okay? I have office hours <laughs> in an hour um, from one till three. So if you have any questions, anything pops into your head, jump into office hours or do a discussion Q&A or send me an email through Blackboard.